Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you occasionally take images of the night sky from a light polluted area, then you might want to watch this. A couple of months ago, I posted a video in which I tested several broadband light pollution suppression filters using my spectrophotometer. Those filters are supposed to act as a replacement for a luminance filter to image broadband targets from urban areas, either with a mono or a one-shot color camera. Based on my measurements, I eventually came to the conclusion that none of the filters currently available on the market were going to be particularly effective against the modern form of light pollution created by LED streetlights. Shortly after I published that video, Alpine Astronomical, a retailer located in Idaho and the official North American distributor for German brand Bader, reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in testing Bader's new UHCL filter. According to Bader's website, this new filter can be used as, I quote, an LED-optimized luminance filter for RGB imaging with sky glow suppression, end quote. So today I am going to do a full review of that filter using my spectrophotometer, but also by imaging a few deep sky broadband targets from my backyard to determine whether this filter actually works. Make sure to watch the entire video until the end because the answer is going to surprise you. All right, let's get started. First, a quick disclaimer. I received this filter from Alpine Astronomical free of charge, but as you would expect, I have full editorial control over the content of this video, and so you will get a perfectly honest and transparent review. Regardless, I wanted to thank Alpine Astronomical and Bader for letting me test this new filter. If you order this filter from Alpine Astronomical, as of July 2023, it costs 106 US dollars for the one and a quarter inch mounted version and 182 US dollars for a two inch version. I got the 31 millimeter unmounted version and it retails for 123 US dollars. There are a few other sizes available as well. I put a link to the product page on the Alpine Astronomical website in the description below. All right, let's look at the packaging now. The filter comes in a sturdy plastic box and contains some foam padding to keep the filter safe. On first examination, the filter looked pristine with no visible defect on the coatings. If you order the unmounted version of the filter like I did, you will notice that it has blackened edges and there is a telescope lead side indicator in the form of a black outer rim on one side. It is critical to pay attention to that because if you mount the filter in the wrong direction, you will likely get terrible results. Now let's take a look at the spectral transmission graph provided by Bader. It shows two fairly wide transmission bands, each roughly 50 to 60 nanometers wide, with a peak transmission of about 95% and 0% transmission off band as you would expect, except maybe in the infrared above 1.1 microns where the quantum efficiency of CMOS cameras is pretty much zero anyway. Of course, I put this filter to the test with my own spectrophotometer, because we now know that we should not blindly trust the specs published by filter manufacturers. If you are new to this channel, you can check out some of my filter testing videos where I describe my spectrophotometer and the entire filter testing procedure in great detail. For this measurement, I set up my spectrograph in its low resolution configuration so I can cover the entire visible spectrum in a single measurement. And here is the transmission graph I was able to obtain. It matches the manufacturer's specs very closely, which is not surprising, but always a good thing to confirm. Each transmission band is roughly 50 to 60 nanometers wide, and the peak transmission is about 95% within these two bands. The off-band transmission is 0%, and it looks like all of the emission lines we care about, such as H-beta, O3, H-alpha, or S2, are included in the transmission bands. So far, so good. But at this point, I was not really that impressed, until I compared it with the spectrum of my local light pollution, which you should be able to see on the screen now. My local light pollution is heavily impacted by LED streetlights, as I've talked about in a previous video. But I did not explain why LED streetlights have this strange spectral profile. Most LED bulbs currently used for public lighting emit only in the blue part of the spectrum. To make those bulbs usable, manufacturers coat the photosites with phosphor, 
which absorbs some of that blue light and re-emits it at higher wavelengths. And that is why we see the spectral profile with a tall but narrow peak in the blue and a shallower but wider emission region centered around the yellow part of the spectrum. In a previous video, I said that there was an opportunity for filter manufacturers to create light pollution suppression filters that were better suited to this modern form of light pollution. Well, it looks like Bader did it. Let's superimpose the filter transmission graph with the spectrum of my local light pollution. I am impressed. Bader is taking advantage of the so-called green gap in the LED spectrum. At least on paper, it looks like this filter should provide a boost in signal-to-noise ratio by rejecting a large portion of my local light pollution while letting a decent amount of signal through. Before we try this new filter under the night sky, let's first try to quantify by how much we expect the signal-to-noise ratio to change on the areas of an object that are at the limit of detection. For example, the outer halo of an average spiral galaxy, because the result is going to surprise you. We're going to have to make a few reasonable assumptions to simplify this calculation, because if we wanted to do a truly scientific simulation, we would have to take into account things like the spectral distribution of the signal, as well as the camera's quantum efficiency, among other factors. That would get a little too complicated, so let's keep things somewhat simple for now. So let's first assume that the signal from our target has a uniform spectral distribution. Let's also assume that the mean value of that signal is roughly the same as that of the light pollution. We'll use a value of 100 electrons. Next, we'll assume that the shot noise from both our target and the light pollution can be modeled using a Poisson distribution. And finally, we'll use an astronomic L3 filter, which is the luminance filter I usually use, for our baseline comparison. That filter has a measured bandwidth of 260 nanometers, whereas Bader's UHCL filter has a measured bandwidth of 110 nanometers. Let's now review how we can calculate the signal-to-noise ratio of our image. Remember that in astroimaging, the unwanted signal, that is light pollution, can be subtracted from our image using PixInsight's dynamic background extraction process. What is left, however, is the shot noise from that unwanted signal. So we will call S the mean value of the signal from our target, and we'll call LP the mean value of the light pollution signal. Once the background has been subtracted from our image, the image signal-to-noise ratio is equal to S, divided by the square root of S plus LP. Let's calculate the signal-to-noise ratio for our baseline comparison image. So we'll replace S and LP in the formula with a dummy but reasonable value of 100 electrons, and we obtain a baseline signal-to-noise ratio equal to 7. Now let's see what happens when we take an image of the same object with the same total exposure time, but this time using Bader's new UHCL filter. The formula to calculate the signal-to-noise ratio is the same as before, but the values are affected by the filter. A back-of-the-envelope calculation tells us that Bader's UHCL filter is going to transmit only about 40% of the target signal compared to the astronomic L3 filter. So our value for S is not going to be 100, it's going to be 40. Next, I calculated, using a Python script, that Bader's UHCL filter only transmits about 20% of my local light pollution. So LP is not going to be 100, it's now going to be 20. Let's enter those values into the formula. The new signal-to-noise ratio is now 5.2. Wait, what? The signal-to-noise ratio with Bader's new UHCL filter is lower than with a basic luminance filter? This does not look good. Just looking at the formula, it appears that the problem with this filter is that its overall bandwidth is not sufficiently large, but then a larger bandwidth would let a lot more broadband light pollution through. So it's a tricky balance. All right, enough with the theory for now. Let's try this filter under the night sky because no amount of spectrophotometric measurements or computer simulations can replace direct experience by taking an image of a broadband deep sky target from my backyard with this filter and comparing the result that you would get under the same exact conditions and with the same overall exposure time but with a standard UV IR cut filter. My friend Francesco Mescia was actually able to test this filter before I did. He set up his own 5-inch triplet refractor in his backyard under beautiful bottle 8 skies 
and imaged M101. Let's take a look at the result in PixInsight. Here is a calibrated 3-minute sub using the Astronomic L3 filter. And now let's compare with a calibrated 3-minute sub taken immediately after, but this time using Bader's new UHCL filter. I'm not sure whether the difference comes through very well with YouTube's video compression. Make sure that you are watching this video in 1080p. But basically, there is a drastic loss in signal-to-noise ratio. We can see it a little bit better if we zoom in. Some of the dark spiral features near the core of the galaxy, which are readily visible in the image taken with the UVIR cut filter, are completely invisible in the image taken with Bader's UHCL filter. So this seems to confirm the theoretical results we discussed earlier. I also tested the filter myself by pointing my telescope at the Iris Nebula. I took 150 one-minute exposures through each filter, and I tried to keep the conditions as similar as possible between the two filters by imaging on the same night and by alternating between filters every 30 minutes. I also ran an autofocus routine every time I switched filters. Then I calibrated the subs, stacked them, and cropped the stacking artifacts. Let's take a look at the result now. Again, the difference may not be completely obvious if you are watching this video on YouTube, but basically the image taken through Bader's UHCL filter has quite a bit more noise than the one taken with the Astronomic L3 filter. Again, let's zoom in so that we can see things a little bit better. The difference is not huge, but it is there, and I think that the image taken with the UVIR cut filter is a lot smoother and will be easier to process. To conclude, I cannot see a use for this filter as an imaging filter. On broadband targets, it does not improve the signal-to-noise ratio, and actually, for the same total exposure time, it lowers the signal-to-noise ratio compared to a standard UVIR cut filter. And for narrowband targets, you are much better off using a narrowband filter if you have a mono camera, or a dual narrowband filter if you use an OSC camera. As a general rule, if you are affected by broadband light pollution caused by LED streetlights, no filter will allow you to increase the signal-to-noise ratio on broadband targets. Your only options are to increase the total exposure time or take a trip to a dark site. On the other hand, and although I haven't verified it, I am pretty sure that Bader's new UHCL filter is quite good for visual observing from light polluted areas. This filter is likely to provide a significant increase in contrast, although it will also reduce the brightness of the object by a fair amount, which might dim some features below the threshold of detection of the human eye. So this is something that visual observers might want to try. But for astrophotography, I just cannot see a use for this filter, and I think that Bader may want to remove from their website the slightly incorrect statements they make about this filter. If you think I am wrong, please leave a comment below. Whether or not you think I am wrong, if you enjoy this type of content, please click like and subscribe to the channel. We'll be back in a few weeks. Thank you for watching and clear skies.